Now, Stephanie, you ended up a re with a response uh, to a response you gave to me, and I had started listening to the response. I'm certainly not finished listening to it, but I wanted to cover what I can at this point. Um, one of the questions was, how can you live in heaven knowing that relatives are in hell? Well, it's very simple. If these people who were sent to hell were sent to hell for a specific... You're going to know why they were sent there. The very second... You, no, no, God is not going to wipe out your memory. That, that, that's a delusion. Matter of fact, you're going to have the perfect memory when you get up there. That's just a fact. Okay, and I know that a lot of preachers don't teach that, but I'm sorry, it's true. You're going to have the perfect. You're going to remember every single thing you ever did from the day you were born to the day you die. Period. So, how is it that we can live up in heaven knowing that these relatives are in hell? It's very simple. To know that these people who committed these evil acts to other people could also do the same thing to you because it's still in their evil nature, it's living inside of them, why would you want them around? Let's say that you have a relative, they didn't steal from you, but they stole from somebody else. Knowing that they would steal from somebody else, would you want them around you? Could you trust them in heaven? I don't think so. Let's say they didn't lie to you, but they lied to somebody else. Well, how would you ever know they were telling the truth? You couldn't. It's that simple. And this is the kind of thing we're talking about. Knowing how evil natured they became, they had to become so evil natured that they had to be sent to hell. Why would you want them around you? I wouldn't. I have relatives in my life I would never want to see again. because Not because of what they did to me, because they didn't do anything to me, but because of what they did to my some of my family or, or some of my friends or, or just some complete strangers. Well, if they did it to them, couldn't they then therefore also do it unto me? How could I trust them? It wouldn't be possible. I'm sorry that they're down there, but they made choices. And they were bad choices that got them sent eternally to hell. But I could reason out why they're there and say there was a good reason. for Jesus does not send people to hell without a good reason. And because I would know that the author of love had to send these people to hell because of something that they just could never overcome in their lifetime, I could then accept it. It wouldn't be the best situation. It certainly would sadden me. But I would understand it and I would be able to move on. Listen, people in this life can move on when somebody dies. It's not the best thing in the world, but they move on. And that's exactly what's going to happen in heaven. We're going to know why those people were sent to hell, and it's going to be such a perfect reason that we're going to be able to say, hey, they went to hell for that reason. I wouldn't want to be anywhere near them because I could never trust them. So there's the answer. Now, another question was brought up was, uh, uh, how could you deal with death? Well, the answer is in the book of Acts. Read about Stephen in the book of Acts. Let me tell you something. At the moment of your death, angels are going to appear to escort you into heaven. So you're not even going to see death. Death will be nothing but a shadow to you. And I'm not afraid of a shadow. Are you? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Notice it says shadow. It will not be death. It will just be the shadow of it. So, at the moment you die, boom. You're going to see those angels, and they're going to escort you into heaven. So you'll have nothing to fear, and that's how you deal with dying. Simple as that. Now, the next part was um, the, the social status, and this is going to be part three uh, in a couple of seconds, so stay tuned.